Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. And a question I have for you is, what is the determinant of this matrix? What if I changed this matrix and made these numbers larger or different, like 6 or 17, and made this a 20,000 by 20,000 matrix with ones filled in everywhere else? What's the determinant of that? There are many ways to answer this question, but the reason I bring this particular question up is because there's a nice way to address this that has a more general formulation um, in terms of updating a matrix with a matrix that has nice behavior. And it uses what's called the, determinant, the matrix determinant lemma. So what I'll do is state this lemma and give a proof of it, and then see how it applies in our particular situation. So the lemma states the following. Say you have A, an N by N matrix, and we're gonna make A invertible. Okay, and say you also have two vectors in Rn, U and V, and so I like to think about U and V as N by one matrices. That'll be convenient in our situation. Then the statement of the matrix determinant lemma is that you can compute the determinant of this update to A, where you add this matrix here. Again, if U is an N by one matrix, then V transpose is a one by N matrix, and this is an N by N matrix. We're perturbing A by this N by one matrix. And the statement is that this is equal to the determinant of A times a specific scalar, and that scalar is one plus V transpose A inverse U. All right, so before proving this uh, and seeing how it applies to our particular situation, let's make some comments about this. Uh, so first of all, V transpose, because V is N by one, this is one by N. A inverse is N by N because A was N by N, and U is N by one. So the product here is in fact a one by one matrix or a scalar. So this value here is a scalar. All right, secondly, Let's think about the nature of this update to the matrix A. Let's say U was the vector 1, 3, 7, and V was the vector 2, 4, 8. Then if we look at the entries of this matrix, we're going to have 1 times everything in here, then 3 times everything in here, and then seven times everything in here. So, what we have is a matrix whose rows are all multiples of this first row, or multiples of V transpose. And so this matrix has to have rank one, right? We can eliminate all these rows if we row reduce this matrix, for example, and be left with one non-zero row. That's why we think of this as a rank one update to the matrix A. All right, so, Let's start by thinking about how we'd prove something like this. Um, so the first observation I wanna make is we have a determinant of A here, so it makes sense to pull out A from this factor here. So we can do that by writing this as A times the matrix, the identity, plus A inverse U V transpose. And so the determinant of this product is gonna be the determinant of A times the determinant of I plus a inverse UV transpose. So another way to think about proving this statement, because we have this written as the determinant of A times something, and our result is the determinant of A times something, then it makes sense to prove that these two quantities here in these boxes are equal. So our goal then is to prove that these two actually are equal, and we're gonna do that by considering an interesting set of matrix products. So here's a set of matrix products we're going to consider. We're going to start with the matrix where we have an n by n identity matrix i padded with v transpose and the number one. We're going to have another matrix here and then we're going to have a matrix here that looks like our original matrix except for instead of v transpose we're going to have negative v. And in the middle we're going to have information that deals with the object we have over here. So for example we're going to have in this right corner this matrix right here. Here we're going to have a 0, we're going to have a 1, and then here we'll have an A inverse U. 
Okay, so it seems like this is coming out of nowhere, but we'll see how this plays in to effect to establish this equality right here. So what we're going to do is compute the determinants of this thing in two ways. The first way is we're going to take the determinant of each of these individual matrices, and the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. So the determinant of this matrix here is 1, because we have an identity matrix, all 1's here, and then a 1, and zeros everywhere else above the diagonal, so the determinant of that piece is 1. And same here, the determinant of this matrix is 1 as well. Now here we have a matrix, a bunch of zeros here, and a 1. So the determinant of this matrix is the determinant of this upper left piece times 1, which is the determinant of A plus A inverse UV transpose. So the determinant of this product is, in fact, the determinant of a I plus A inverse UV transpose, which is this thing that we have right over here. So computing the determinant in a different way hopefully will give us this thing here. And another way to compute the determinant is to actually compute the product of these matrices and compute the determinant. So I'll start by computing the product of these two. The leftmost matrix will remain the same. And now we want to compute the product of these two. Maybe for space, I'll move this over here. We have I, um, V transpose 0, 1, and then something. So the first thing here is this, which is I plus A inverse UV transpose, and then we're subtracting an A inverse UV transpose, so we're left with the identity. All right, here we have a 0, and then we have A inverse U. Then we have the identity times 0 and negative V transpose, which is a negative V transpose. And then finally, we have a 1. Now, if you multiply these, we get the identity. We get A inverse U. Uh, and then these two cancel out. And then we're left with a V transpose, or V transpose A inverse U plus 1. So the determinant here, we have a bunch of 1s here, and then the scalar, the determinant will work out to be what the scalar is, which is 1 plus V transpose A inverse U. And that's exactly the thing that we have right over here. So by computing the determinant of this expression in two ways, we get this equality between these two things in these black boxes which means because they're both multiplied by the determinant of A in this expression, that this equality actually does hold, so we have the matrix determinant lemma. Cool. So now the question is, how does the matrix determinant lemma play in computing determinants like this mysterious one of this matrix that we have right over here? All right, so we have this matrix. It would be nice to write it as a rank one matrix plus something that's easy to work with, we, that we know is determinant, and we can compute its inverse easily. And so one way we can do this is to peel off a diagonal matrix that makes this nice to work with. And one way we could do is peel off fours from the diagonals. We'll make zeros everywhere else. And then if we do that, we'd be adding a matrix that has all ones in it. Now, what's the advantage of doing something like this? Well, we notice here that we have a matrix A. And it's very easy to work with in general because it's a diagonal matrix. So we know things like it's determinant and we can compute its inverse. Okay, but here we have a matrix that we can actually write in terms of the product of a vector in itself. We can write it as the vector consisting of all ones times the transpose of the vector consisting of all ones. If we multiply these two vectors together, we'll get an all ones five by five matrix. So here's a U and here's a V transpose. So now we're starting to see what we can possibly do to compute this side. For example, um, our matrix here is a plus UV transpose, so we can get det A, it's the determinant of this, 
We have a diagonal matrix. So this piece here is the product of the diagonal entries, which is four to the fifth. So you're starting to see some cool things come to light. If you like this video so far and you're noticing that we're going to be able to get to this answer using this interesting theorem, then click like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos that illuminate cool processes like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue. So we have to figure out what V transpose A inverse U is. Now because A is a diagonal matrix with all fours on the diagonals, the inverse of A is the matrix with all one-fourths on the diagonals. Now we have our vector u is the all ones vector, and our v transpose is the all ones vector as well. So now we can compute to figure out what v transpose a inverse u is. We'll start by computing a inverse u. Here we get a vector with one-fourths in its entries everywhere. And so V transpose times A inverse U is the dot product of these two things. We'll have a one-fourth everywhere added, which gives us five-fourths. So this works out to one plus five-fourths, which is then four to the fifth times nine-fourths, or in other words, nine times four to the fourth. Cool, so an interesting way to compute the determinant of something like this quickly using a lemma that allows us to understand how to compute determinants when we update matrices by a rank one matrix. So I hope you liked today's video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you liked it, click the like button below.